All right, folks, I originally titled this video Tether in Big Trouble, but we're also going to talk about how the US dollar continues to be in big trouble with inflation running hot once again. That's right, folks. We just got the CPI print coming in hot. The market is back down. We got futures and Bitcoin back down. We're going to get right on into this update, guys. All of my community resources for you guys can be found at my website, ZachRector.com. Really do appreciate all the support. Let's get into it. So S&P 500 futures are now down nearly 100 points in less than 10 minutes after March CPI inflation. The 3.5% inflation print was the second straight monthly increase, the first two-month jump since September of 2023. It was also the fourth straight month with CPI coming in above expectations. CPI, PCE, and PPI inflation are all officially back on the rise. Could we see zero rate cuts in 2024? So reality starting to hit for the markets that were expecting six rate cuts last year, seven rate cuts this year, and now we're talking about no rate cuts at all. Bitcoin back down to 67,000. Let's see where our XRP, XRP is actually holding pretty strong at 60 cents. Um, the market was back down yesterday, XRP still holding, love to see it. But before we get into Tether and talking about how much trouble Tether's in, I wanna expand a little bit further on. Uh, where we're at right now with the US dollar, why we stack our gold, and what kind of returns you actually need to be making if you actually wanna be making any sort of dis, uh, difference in your investments. So let's get right on into it, folks. We got this one to start off here. The typical American household would need to spend $445 more a month to purchase the same goods and services as a year ago, a report from Moody's found. <clears throat> now, this is what I've been saying about GDP too. We're not producing more. It's just that we're charging more for the same goods and services, making our GDP reflect that. And they're touting it as a strong economy. We have unemployment low because everybody's going to get a second and a third job and everybody's side hustling. And you got crazy dudes like me that work, you know, 12, 12 to 15 hours per day, literally just trying to make a living for my family. Right. And I want to take advantage of the greatest transfer of wealth in world history. I'm not just trying to get by. We in our community, we're trying to maximize this opportunity, <clears throat> take complete advantage of it. Now, if you want to see a great representation of what we're talking about as far as the destruction of value, because before we can even get to the stablecoin conversation about Tether, we got to talk about this whole idea of a stable coin. Define stable for me, right? Now, we've talked about XRP being a stable value transfer mechanism, not a stable coin, but a stable value transfer mechanism. Okay, big difference. But as far as a stable coin with the dollar, what are we stable to? Yeah, you know, $1 buys you, what does it get you? It gets you nothing, right? Um, people used to go to the grocery store for a dollar, uh, you know, back, back 100 years ago. Now you can't even get anything for, what, 10 bucks? You're lucky to get a coffee for 10 bucks these days. Now, this is a great representation right here from Marcel, our good friend Marcel Kalinovic from the Butcher of Wall Street. It says, why do I buy precious metals? Because in 19, 1929, the price of a troy ounce of gold was $20. There are 32.15 troy ounces per one kilogram bar. So that equals 6,430 for 10 kilograms of gold. Today on April 8th, an ounce of gold is at 2,344.90. That's right, folks. Gold just continues to rip higher and higher. That equals 753,000 for 10 kilograms of gold. Well, if we look back, the average home price in the USA in 1929 was 4,902. So 10 kilograms of gold would have gotten you a nice size home, not just the average, but a nice size home. The average home price in the USA today is 412,000. So 10 kilograms of gold will get you a nice size home today as well. It's not that gold has gone up in value, it's that the dollar has lost 99.14% of its purchasing power since 1929 due to the printing and expansion of the currency supply. Property values didn't go up 840%. The dollar lost that much purchasing power in 95 years. This is why we stack it. And check out this report that's coming out of Wells Fargo. They're estimating that Costco is selling as much as 200 million in gold bars monthly. It is a miracle, a gold rush at Costco. Now, they did actually just have to raise, I think, the cost of their hot dogs, the $1.50 hot dog. 
uh, which I do like to take advantage of. I, I, I know hot dogs are full of crap and whatever, but I do like to take advantage of that deal um, just because I like a good deal. You know, when I see a good deal, I just got to take advantage of it. And I'll tell you what I've been taking advantage of, and you guys know this, is I've been stacking my silver. I don't have any gold yet in my portfolio. You guys know that. Wifey doesn't like gold jewelry, so I can't buy her any of that. So I don't have any gold. I just have silver right now, but I'm looking to rotate into gold later on after we get closer. And the historical gold to silver ratio is way out of whack. It's like 90 to 1. Really unprecedented. And so as we get back to the normal mean, uh, that's where I'm going to be looking to potentially rotate into gold or um, I'll, I'll just buy gold with some additional funds. <clears throat> but guys, do you understand what's happening right here with Costco? See, we saw this and, and people were laughing about this. Oh, Costco's selling gold. Costco's going to sell silver. Oh, wow. And we've been made fun of in the precious metals community. Now, I've only started stacking for the last couple of years. I'm new. I was stacking freedom seeds for a decade before I started. Hey, maybe I should stack some of the silver too. And we've been made fun of when silver went below 20 bucks and we were buying, you know, it's been below 25 bucks now for a few years. We've been buying. We were made fun of. We've been talking about gold and silver and everybody was clowning on us. And now Costco is moving 200 million in gold bars monthly. This is not a game anymore. And you got you already know what's happening now east, right? <clears throat> With China. Their gold ETFs, they had to shut it down. They had to shut it. It was going too crazy. Folks want the gold. Folks want the silver. They want to get out of these fiat currencies or uh, as, as they're supposed to be, right? Stable coins, okay? Now, this is what I've been describing and Rao Paul putting it into perspective. While everyone is worried about 3.5% inflation, the real issue is the ongoing 8% per annum debasement of currency on top of inflation. Your hurdle rate to break even is around 12% which is the 10 year average returns of the S&P 500 just to keep your purchasing power. So this is what I've been saying, right? If you're not making 10 to 20%, you are taking a leak in the wind to say it nicely, right? I don't, I don't want to swear this morning. Uh, you're taking a leak in the wind. You guys know that term, right? Uh, if you're not making 10 to 20%, because at 12% per annum uh, debasement, right? You're breaking even. So the S and P 500, their town, no, oh yeah, eight to ten percent, uh, you know, eight to ten percent per year, is the is, it, <clears throat> sorry a historical average, and um, it's not getting you anywhere. It's not protecting any wealth. Meanwhile, you saw the representation I just gave you on gold. Has gold gone up? Has the dollar gone down? Well, I don't know, but you can still buy the average size house with that same amount, that same weight in gold. Now, continuing on, folks, let's get into it. So I titled this video, Tether is in big trouble. And I want to highlight here, we had a session yesterday in the Senate where the Treasury basically reported and they reported on their findings of uh, basically terrorist financing using, uh, you know, crypto technology. And so, of course, you know who came out of the woodworks? Senator Elizabeth Warren, Eleanor Terrett sharing this one here and this is senator warren focused on validators or nodes not being subject to the same aml laws as banks she asked uh this person if she sent him one one thousand dollars in cryptocurrency is it possible that iran is the validator of that transaction these folks excuse me they do not even understand how this crypto technology works they really don't these are the people that we have setting the laws and the regulations right now and, and they're coming in to crack down hard, let me tell you. Um, they said it's definitely possible, and Warren responded, quote, So Iran, which is subject to all kinds of sanctions, are making millions of dollars validating transactions, all because we don't have the tools to stop them. She also asked if there was a correlation between the growth of the crypto market and the amount of money Iran is pocketing. Adeyemo said, yes, Warren said there needs to be a regulatory framework in place for stablecoins that will subject users to AML laws. So they're going after stablecoins. Stablecoin legislation is probably going to come first. This is what Congress agrees on most. They don't understand how the technology works, but they understand that basically the United States government through Treasury, through uh, FinCEN and the whole network of regulators and bureaucrats and agents right need to have all of the tools to be able to go after this new technology right they're trying to get caught up to speed on how it works oh iran can be a validator oh no 
And guys, this is why I have John Deaton for Senate in the link of all my videos right now is so that we can go support John Deaton to go kick Elizabeth Warren's behind in this election and to get her out. Right. Because this is absurd. This is who we have setting the rules of the road for crypto regulations. And it's just straight given the script by her bankster buddies that have funded her campaign for her entire career. Very simply. But what are they talking about? What are they going after? And what stablecoin are they using as an example? Tether. Now, we've brought into question Tether's reserves. That's a different subject. Still haven't seen them. Still don't trust them. And I still think that the, you know, the, the, they're a deceptive and fraudulent scheme, according to the New York Attorney General. So that's what we have to work with. That's been proven in a court of law. Now, you are going to see here, this is the letter. U.S. Treasury Deputy Secretary issues a official statement to Senate Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs Committee claiming Russia is using Tether's USDT stablecoin to bypass economic sanctions. So they're not going on here to, to uh, you know, blame Circle. They're not worried about Ripple stablecoin. And, and, and <laughs> you guys already know the deal. I slept very well last night knowing that Brad Garinghouse and the team at Ripple is about to go set the standard for not only stablecoins on the XRP ledger, but stablecoins broadly speaking. Now, there's three sets of reforms that they want, uh, which basically includes they need the authority to uh, basically go after these validators. OK, um, and, and, and basically they, they want to close these gaps that they don't have where they can't get to these crypto exchanges. The long and the short of it is, and they call them virtual asset service providers, which is basically validators and nodes. They want to be able to go after anyone who's even trading a derivative of the U.S. dollar, i.e. a stablecoin like Tether. If you are trading anything that is supposed to be backed or representative of the U.S. dollar, they're saying that that should encompass their jurisdiction to go after people outside of the United States of America. And this is what brings in the article that we read last week. <clears throat> And you can see right here, this is an exchange out of Russia that helped facilitate 20 billion of crypto transfers to Russia ch uh, exchange using Tether. So this is now coming into the spotlight here. And like I said, it's not Circle. It's not Pax. It's, it's not any of these other DAI. It's not Ripple stablecoin. It's Tether. 20 billion worth of cryptocurrency transactions that pass through a Russia-based virtual exchange. And so they're going on and you know the deal you know how political this is right right we all have to support ukraine send another billion there 100 something billion that we funded them right we got to do that deal no questions asked and god forbid someone in iran is running a bitcoin miner and is making a few you know a few dollars mining bitcoin right uh and, and here's the deal they're gonna come they're gonna crack down hard and I think that you're going to see players like Circle that are going to make it through this. They knew this was coming and they've not allowed this stuff to happen. It appears to me that Tether's, you know, basically program has been similar to Binance. And I call it Binance because that's what Treasury Secretary Janet No Telling Yellen calls them, right? Binance had to pay a fine of $4 billion to the U.S. government or whatever it was because they were breaking the laws. They knew it. But it's just like what the banksters do. It's just part of the business. It's just a line item on the balance, you know, on the uh, financial statement that they've already accounted for. And that appears to be the strategy of Tether, where they know that they're doing this type of activity. It's just a matter of, OK, what are you going to do? Make us pay a little fine? You know, we're worth two thirds of the entire market cap of all of the stable coins at over 100 billion. With, you know, it, it, and it's crazy. The CEO founder of Tether, right? They're becoming literally some of the richest guys in the world. Okay. And, and so it's, it appears it's just part of their business model. We know we're going to get caught. And what are you also seeing out of Tether? They know that they have the ability to freeze. So if you think that you're in a decentralized currency there with stay, uh, you know, stable coin Tether, it couldn't be further from the truth. Now, for mo most of us, right, we're not really, it's not a concern for us, but the problem that this relates back to the entire crypto space and why it should be a concern for all of us listening to this show here today, it's not Tether FUD about the reserves that we have to worry about so much as it is Tether getting hit with some sort of fine for these sanctions and this type of activity. This type of blow and then tighter regulations around it 
is going to reduce uh, temporarily the liquidity that Tether does provide. Now, is it going to hit Bitcoin as hard as it hits some of the altcoins? No, I think it'll hit some of these altcoins in a lot of these cryptos where the main liquidity payer is with Tether. That's the problem, right? Is that Tether does over 60% of the trading volume in this space. And so if Tether gets in any sort of trouble, if they get knocked down, if they lose their peg, I'm not even talking about the reserves yet either, right? But that could bring into a question, right? If we get kind of a quote unquote bank run on Tether, I'm not trying to FUD this thing out. You guys are seeing, they are using Tether as an example. It's just like the judge in the Coinbase case that's using Solana as an example of a security. It's not my words, it's theirs. I want you guys to be prepared and understand the implications. Like I said, if you appreciate our show, if you want to pick up some precious metals, maybe you can go to Costco, or if you want to use our affiliates, we have them available for you guys as well. I appreciate all of your support, and uh, I will see you guys in the next one. We got an update dropping on XRP as well later today, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that, and we'll see you in the next one. God bless you all. I am your host, Zach Rector. I really appreciate all of the love and support. If you want to support the channel, just remember that you can start by smashing that thumbs up for me, sharing this content far and wide, and everything else is at my website.